Welcome back everyone. Thank you for visiting the YouTube channel for bestbiblecommentaries.com. This video is part three of a series I'm doing called How to Build a Biblical Resources Library. If you have not seen the first two videos, I would recommend that you would watch those first because they provide a foundation for what I'm going to say in this third video. I'll put links in the description box down below so you can easily access those videos, watch them, and then return for part three. The first thing I want to mention right off the bat is that there is a resource that I'm going to show you in this video that is not a book. It is actually a laminated theology chart that I think some of you might find really helpful. I have a way that you can save some money on this chart, and when I talk about it in just a moment, I will let you know what that is. Before I get into the content of the video, I invite you to subscribe to the channel, like the video by clicking the thumbs up button, and feel free to leave a comment or ask a question down below. Before I get into the first resources that I'm going to show you, I just like to offer a word of encouragement. You can see that I have a Bible down here, and as I've arranged the books on the table here in front of me, it's I'm hoping that it will provide a good visual illustration of something I want to encourage you to do. And that's that as you use biblical studies resources, that you would use them in a way that drive you back to Scripture. So whether using a concordance, a commentary, a theology book, a handbook, that you would use them with the mindset of having them take you to Scripture and help your understanding of Scripture. The benefit of these resources is to seek wisdom, not for the resource themselves, but to seek wisdom to help us understand Scripture better. I think um, perhaps an analogy is a sermon. When I listen to a sermon, do I expect to hear some of the pastor's thoughts or ideas? Yes, I do. But I really want the preachers to focus on helping me to understand Scripture better. So I would suggest using or building and using your biblical resources library in the same way. All the resources should center on scripture. And in my opinion, uh, that should be our, our mindset as we're, as we're seeking wisdom from pastors and scholars and others who have written these wonderful books. Okay, the first resource that I want to show you is some pocket dictionaries of biblical studies. In a previous video, I talked about dictionaries of theological terms. These ones are different. These are dictionaries of biblical studies. The reason why I think these are a good resource to consider at this point in building your library is because as you start to use acquire and use individual commentaries on books of the Bible, the authors might use terms and phrases that you're not familiar with. They're they're uh, common in biblical scholarship, but they might not be common in, you know, a Sunday school class or a small group. And having a small dictionary like this is going to help you understand a lot of those terms. Maybe not every term will be in here, but a lot of them will be. And these are, are these are pretty affordable. So there are going to be a few words in these dictionaries that will overlap with some of the words in theology dictionaries that I showed you. But most of them are going to be uh, original and unique to, to biblical studies. So a benefit of, of these resources is that I, I would guess that they're like 10 or $12 each. So, and even less used if you can find them. So that's, so pretty affordable. Um, so this one is the Baker compact dictionary of biblical studies. And this one is the IVP pocket dictionary of biblical studies. And there's probably a few others out there, but I thought I would just show you these ones. All right, so what I've said about commentaries so far is a couple things. One, I think if, if you're new to biblical studies, if you're new to studying the Bible, or if you're a new Christian, my suggestion is to, to major on the Gospels in your study for a, a season of time. I think it's really wise to spend a lot of time on Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and study the teachings of, of Jesus. Now, uh, from there, where would I go to help me build my knowledge of scripture as a whole. And I would go to the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. And that recommendation isn't so much a theological recommendation as it's, it's more of a practical recommendation and a historical recommendation because every section of scripture references the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, the history books of the Old Testament, the wisdom literature, the prophetic literature, the New Testament gospels, writings of Paul, writings of John, writings of Peter. They all will quote from the Pentateuch. They will allude to the Pentateuch. They'll make reference to people in the Pentateuch, Abraham and Moses and others. And so that's why I would suggest that after the gospels, you consider building out the Pentateuch 
section of your library. So I'm going to show you three different commentaries right now. And the, the, my recommendation, although these are all well-reviewed commentaries and I've talked about them in other videos on my channel, I'm not necessarily recommending the individual commentaries. That's not really my point that I want to make here. So um, let me back up. I have a page on my website that lists the top 50 commentary series in groups of 10. There's a link in the description box down below if you want to see that. So what I decided to do as far as first steps go in getting commentaries on the Gospels or on the Pentateuch is to look at what series in the top 10 are the most affordable. So a comment that I get quite a bit, and a lot of times it's just in a, in a joking manner, but it's also true as well, is that biblical studies resources can be expensive. So I thought that as a starting place, I would show you out of the top 10 commentary series, what three are the three that are consistently more affordable in comparison to others in the top 10. And that would be the NIV application commentary series, the Tyndale New Testament or Old Testament commentaries, and the New American commentary series. When compared to other series in the top 10, these ones are consistently more affordable, usually in the 20 to $30 range, sometimes cheaper. And as you may have noticed, others in the top 10 could be up to twice, three times, even four times as much as as these ones. So again, these are all excellent, excellent. Um, these volumes are all been very well reviewed, but that's not really my point. It's, my point is to show you, here's a couple of examples of the gospel. Here's an example from the Pentateuch. And these are uh, affordable, relatively <laughs> uh, more affordable than, than some of the other series. So I, I thought that might be a good start, starting point. I've also showed you one volume commentary options in a previous video, but just along the lines of affordability, I thought that I would look at what's the most affordable one volume commentary that has really good reviews. So again, I have a page on my website where I list the top 25 whole Bible commentaries. So what I did, I went to that page and I looked at the top five and I, and I found the most affordable out of those top five. And that was this one. The FF Bruce uh, is the editor, uh, very renowned biblical scholar. And the, the book is called the international biblical, the international Bible commentary. This book has many different cover designs because it's been out for several decades now. So you, you might find it in a different cover design, but as long as it's FF Bruce, and as long as the international Bible commentary, then you have the right volume used. You can find this for maybe 10 or $15, depending on uh, shipping. And it's the most affordable out of the top five one volume commentaries. And again, I, I have listed those commentaries on that page in terms of academic aggregate reviews. So that's the most affordable option. All right. Next, I wanted to show you a commentary guide. So as you build out the commentary section of your biblical resources library, you might want to get a commentary guide. There are, there are many different commentary guides out there. Some of the more popular ones are written by D.A. Carson or Tremper Logman. This one is a New Testament commentary guide by Nijay Gupta. This is from uh, Lexham Press. And what commentary guides do is they'll, the, you, so you turn to the Matthew section and you look up Blomberg, for example, and it'll give you like a few sentences usually on Blomberg. It'll say he has a Baptist, he's Baptist and um, whatever else. They, they'll say that maybe the series is intended for pastors or something like that. And they'll say if it's, you know, what they might offer a review, they might not. So that's what commentary guides are. Now, some of you might be thinking, isn't that what you're doing on your channel and your website? Aren't you kind of a commentary guide? Uh, yes, actually, that is what I'm doing. Um, but I just, um, I don't see these people, I don't see them, these books as competitor competitors. <laughs> uh, I feel like we're just all on the same team and all trying to study the Bible more and better for the benefit of the church, for the glory of God and Christ. And so... Um, that's just how I feel about it. And so, uh, it, you might want to, you know, hear voices other than just mine with regard to commentary. So just to let you know that there's commentary guides out there that might be helpful to you. 
All right, so now we move into the theology portion of this third video, and it's at this point where I would recommend a systematic theology book. This is not a, this is a mid-level um, resource, and systematic theology is when the authors will take the reader through the doctrines of Scripture sequentially and, and in a logical order, and systematic theology, the approach is to take a topic like um, angels. The writer is, is attempts to summarize all of the Bible's teaching on angels in the chapter on angels. Um, same with Holy Spirit. What does the entire Bible say about the Holy Spirit and, and so on? So, a, so the reason why I'm showing you this one is because I think that this is probably the most popular systematic theology book out there. So I thought I would just show you this one. Maybe some of you have heard of it before, didn't know what it was. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that this is the right systematic theology book for for you. What I would consider if I was you is what tradition, what Christian tradition are you in? Um, are you a member of a particular denomination? Denominations have authors that have written systematic theology books according to their convictions. So uh, I, would cons I would consider your own tradition and getting a systematic theology book that aligns with your tradition. So uh, Grudem is, is Baptist, and he is um, um, he's a continuationist. Um, but other systematic theologies, the authors are going to have different perspectives. So, you know, there's wisdom in, in aligning with... Uh, what you think, what your tradition is. So, um, <clears throat> I also want to show you this um, theology chart here. It's kind of hard to get it in the frame. Um, it's a little bit bigger resource. It's it's formatted for like a like a notebook. You could put it in a notebook. It's hole punched here. And this is uh, a summary of what's in. The Grudem textbook. So you, I, I don't think that there's other laminated charts that go with other systematic theology textbooks. The Grudem textbook is just so popular; it has supplemental materials, and this is one of them. But I think this could be helpful to people, even if you disagree on Grudem with some on some things. I think this could just be helpful in understanding the logic of how systematic theology works. Part one: the Word of God. Part two: the doctrine of God. Uh, part three, the doctrine of man, part four, the doctrines of Christ and the Holy Spirit and, and on it goes. And it's just giving you summaries of creation, God's providence, uh, the Trinity, the attributes of God and so on. And this particular chart was published with this version of Grudem's book, uh, systematic theology book. So as you can tell, like the, even like the design, the design of the resources is pretty similar with the blue background and the white or the yellow lettering. So, but here's my, here's my, here's my tip for you. There is actually a revision to this textbook. So if you look for this exact chart right now with this design, I just checked before I started making this video, these, these simple things are selling for like $50 right now because this design is out of print. The chart is not out of print. The design is out of print. And the sellers are either, either trying to, they either think it's out of print, and so the demand is high, and the supply is low, or they know it is, and they're just trying to get people to <laughs> pay a lot more money for a simple chart. This is the revision of Grudem's textbook. And there is a chart that now has the design of, of this textbook. So if you look for this design, you'll see charts listed for $50. If you look for a chart that has this design with this second edition here, this new cover design, they're going to be like $10, I think is what they were. So that's my tip on how to afford my, how to um, get one of these charts at a more affordable price. So after a systematic theology book, what I would do is build out the different sections of 
systematic theology. So, for example, uh, part one is the Word of God. Part two is the doctrine of God. I think this provides a good logical sequence for how to build out different sections of your the theology portion of your library. So, I would start with uh, books about the Word of God, books about Scripture. I'll show you two in just a second. But I would start with books about Scripture, and then books about the doctrine of God, and then books about whatever the third one was, the, the doctrine of man or anthropology, um, sin would be in that category. And then books about Christ and the Holy Spirit. Now, you know, some might just make a beeline to books about Christ or the Holy Spirit. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I'm just trying to provide you with a, some logic to building out your library. So I would start with, after I had a systematic theology textbook, I would start with books about the Bible itself the theology um, regarding the doctrine of scripture. So I want to show you one classic and one modern book along those lines. This is the classic. And as you can tell, it doesn't really have a classic design. <laughs> it's just blank because that's how a lot of books were published at this time. Uh, but this is the inspiration and authority of the Bible by B.B. Warfield. This is a mid-level book. But I think pastors would do just fine with it. It's sometimes the English is a little bit older than uh, modern English today, but uh, I think it's not beyond comprehension for for modern readers. This is a classic in this in this uh, space, and um, and so BB Warfield, inspiration and authority of the Bible, and then a modern resource regarding the doctrine of Scripture would be this is an example. Uh, Kevin DeYoung, Taking God at His Word, Why the Bible is Knowable, Necessary, and Enough, and What That Means for You and Me. So it's a neat little resource. Uh, it's not too long, 140 pages or so, and um, very helpful to, to Christians today, written and just published in just 2014. I know different schools that are starting to recommend this one more and more in their Bible classes. So um, I think that's a good recommendation for you. So thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful and I will see you next time.